book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 35, just want to encourage you in this work of God, what you're doing here. And take some things out of here and uh, out of this, just preach on it for a bit. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, God, for your mercy and for your grace and for uh, all that you do and provide for us. Thank you, Lord. I praise you. Be, uh, help me, Lord God, and be a blessing to these folks that are here to hear from you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Exodus 35, we're going to go in verse 4 and start there. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red, badger skins and shittim wood. And oil for the light, and spices for anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. And oink stones, stones to be set for the ephod, and for the breastplate. Now you have here uh, directions given, and they're going to build this tabernacle in the wilderness. And some things here that are interesting is, you know, that you know, that tabernacle wasn't built for God. He doesn't need a place to dwell. But that tabernacle is built so that, that they can have a place to meet up with God. Hmm. And, you know, it's not so much unlike you. Uh, I'm thankful that we're not uh, building tabernacles. I mean, I like the church building. I like what you have here. I, I appreciate the cushion seat. and I, I th I'm thankful that we get together to exhort one another. But the truth of the New Testament is, is that, what, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. You don't need, uh, you don't need to go get a bull, a bullock, a, a goat, a, a lamb, a... And bring it to your pastor and say, hey, is this good enough? And he doesn't need to slit the throat, take that blood and put it on the mercy seat. We know that we're saved through faith in Jesus Christ. But the, 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 one of the mysteries, as you know, of this whole thing is in Colossians 1.27. Keep a hand in Exodus and go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. verse 27. To whom, well, let's go back a verse or two. Go to verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches the glory of this mystery among you Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Amen. What an amazing thing that Amen. you can have Christ in you. You're a tabernacle. You know, your body is a tabernacle Amen. for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, you know, they uh, just like in the Old Testament, they you know they they got delivered from bondage. Yeah. Four hundred years of bondage, four hundred and thirty years in Egypt, and then there arose up a Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph. They became slaves. But before they left, that blood of that lamb was put on that doorpost, and they got delivered from that angel of death. And then they went through the Red Sea. And we know that's all a picture for us of, a, of our type of salvation. When, when One of the things John the Baptist said when he saw Jesus Christ was, Behold, the Lamb of God is taking away the sin of the world. Amen. And he was he's our Passover. Yeah. You know, but there's similarities in, in this work of the, of the church and this tabernacle. One thing I want you to, to, to take in mind when you look at, at Exodus 35 and verse 5, Take ye from among you an offering in the Lord whosoever is of a willing heart. It's a willing offering. Yeah. You know, in the New Testament, it's a willing offering. You, you, know, you, you should give to the work of God. But we're not going to do like the Mormons do and, and keep track of uh, your tithes. And when you don't come, we knock on your door and say, hey. Now I talked to, uh, man, who was it? Uh, I talked to somebody who had dealt with Mormons. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, somebody in Las Vegas who was from the southern Idaho area. 
uh, well, the pastor there, Mitch Service, and he was telling me how that the Mormons have got so much of that sewn up there in, in industry and, and packing plants. And there was a guy who's born in LDS, and then he wasn't going to the church there. And, but he was a farmer, and he went to take his onions to the packing shed, and they said, nope. You haven't been paying your tithe. Mm. Wow. It was owned by Mormons. So he went to a different packing shed. They said, nope. Hmm. So he had to go pay his tithe so he can get his onions taken care of. Wow. wow. And that, that's, that's, not, that's not New Testament Christianity. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know what you do. That's between you and God. But it starts with a willing heart. And, I, you know, if I look at these people and I think about this, I mean, I mean if anybody, I mean, here you are, you have the Jewish people. They were slaves. They were in the iron the, of, of affliction mm -hmm. in Egypt. You know, if anybody could have said, wow, you know what? No. You know, all this stuff that we read about that they're bringing for the temple, they got that from Egypt. Mm -hmm. yeah. They spoiled the Egyptians. The Egyptians, after that last plague, when the, the firstborn was, was killed by that angel of death, they said, get out of here and take this with you. Now all these people, I, I you know, I, I just in my mind I think you know there had to be somebody probably thought you know what, I saw my my grandfather die making bricks, mm -hmm. I saw my grandmother whipped by the taskmaster's whips, mm -hmm. and I didn't have anything for generations, hundreds of years. We didn't have anything. Why should I give this to God? This is mine. And the truth of the matter is, is that whatever you make, whatever you do, the, the air you breathe, it's of God's. The, the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And it's you're taking what, what God has given you, and you get the opportunity to put it into the work of God. God, it starts with a willing heart. Amen. And without that willing heart, you know, if you're going to give it grudgingly or of necessity, don't even bother because it doesn't you know, and here they are. It starts with a willing heart. Amen. Now you look at this and go to uh, Exodus chapter 12. Just look at it just so you can see it with your own eyes. Exodus chapter 12. And verse 36. Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. So all these things that were going to be put into the temple, to paint the temple, all the gold and the oil, all the oil, the incense, and everything came, all that came from Egypt. Amen. And today it's the same thing. You're going to get into, involved in the work of God, help build a church, help the church get going, help reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're going to be taking the things of the world where you go and make money and giving it back to God. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Second Corinthians 8, 8. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that ye through His poverty might be made rich. And here I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be fro forward, not forward, that's what yeah. you forward a year ago. Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, the mind is connected to the heart. The heart is involved there. It, ha it is according to a man hath, not according to that a man that he hath not. For I mean not that other men be eased and you be burdened. But the point that I want you to see is a willing mind. It's willing getting involved in the work of God. I mean, it's up to you. You know, and uh, you go to there, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6, But this I say, he which soweth spirit, sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he what? Purposeth mm -hmm. in his heart. Mm -hmm. So let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. 
Amen. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that He always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. That's what the Lord wants. He wants to, you know, for you to, you know, to be able to give into this work and then just see Him do some great things that you didn't even think of yeah. that were Amen. possible. Amen. You know, I was uh, there's the church in Las Vegas. I was preaching. Uh, I was at their missions conference, and they told a story last year. They told a story of when in uh, 2013, no, 2014, uh, the pastor died. He had a stroke right in the pulpit. Uh, Pete McKenzie. Wow. And he sat back, and he died, and they took some hits. Uh, the, the associate pastor there, Mitch Service, he took the church, and they, the people wanted him, but, and some people left. They left, and uh, so they weren't meet, meeting what they'd been putting out in missions. Now they uh, they do faith promise. If you don't, that's between you and God. But they do faith promise, and they purpose in their heart to give so much. And they didn't have it. And so they went to the Lord and said, Lord, you know, we don't have it. I don't know how we're going to do this. They paid their bills, and they were short so much. And they were having the service one day, and this guy came in through the through the door, uh, a cowboy looking. It, it looked like he had a duster. He looked like he just rode in on his horse. He <laughs> had his hat on down there, and he, he went over, and he looked at the mission board, and I looked at some of the names, and, and uh, you know, they were watching him, seeing what he was going to do, and then he just did that, and he just checked it out, and, and then he went up there, and he put an envelope in the offering plate, and then left. Hmm. And it was exactly the amount that they needed to meet there, that they were to give the mission to the Lord. Wow. And then the next month, it happened again, the same guy. And this time, you know, one of the... Sean, he tried to catch him. He said, you know, the guy went in there, put in the offering, and then he went out the door, and, and Sean went out there, and he was nowhere around. No horse, no nothing. Thought he might be on a horse. I mean, the duster was just covered. They didn't know who it was. But it was, again, that amount that they needed. Hmm. And then the Lord took care of it from there. Miraculous things, but they, they purposed in their heart, and they had, to, had uh, you know, wanted to be involved in missions, and they, you know, the Lord took care of it. And He will take care of it. That's right. Amen. He'll give it to you. It's His. Yep. Because He's involved in this thing of missions. Yeah. I've seen it happen over and over again in my own life. I mean, I, I was at one meeting where I, uh, I don't know how I got there. Well, I got somebody told me about it, and I called, and and it was uh, Independent Fundamental Baptist churches that were meeting, and there is a Bible conference and. Most of them, if they'd known where I went to school, they would. I would have been anathema or maranatha. <laughs> <laughs> but the, anyway, we were sitting there the first night, and this younger couple, they got in late. They sat by us by chance and uh, got to talking to them and found out that he'd been taking a correspondence course. And, and uh, he had read Brother Sutek's book on public ministry. Amen. And Brother he'd, he'd sent an email to Brother Sutek just saying how encouraged he was by that book. Yeah. And he was just he was just thrilled, encouraged that Brother Sutek took the time to call him. Yeah. You know, and encourage him. And then when he found out we were working with the Sutex, it was just it was a blessing. And about the second day of that meeting, uh, third day, they were taking up offerings for different various needs. And that family was sitting on the other side of the room. You know, they had a seat somewhere else. We were still visiting with them. It wasn't like they said, oh, you know. <laughs> and uh, they had a need where they'd been in a car accident, had some medical needs. Uh, the pastor asked, you know, anything that you need. Well, you know, one of the things that happened, they, they said there was one guy's Bibles for the Philippines. I was like, man, yeah, Lord, I want to get in that. I, I'll put in some money on that. I want to be involved in that. Amen. I know the, the need for good King James Bibles in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I've been in churches out in the jungles where... They don't have a King James Bible. Maybe one person has it, and they got an NIV, ASV. They got a mess. Mm. I know the need. They said, "Lord, yeah, I'd like to. Let me. I want to have part in that." So I, you know, I put in for that. Then they had another one where there was bunk beds for, for uh, a boys' home up in uh, Goldendale, Washington. And I thought, yeah, you know, there's some young men need some help. Man, I'll, I'll take. Yeah, I want to have part of that. And this family. They had their medical needs, and, and uh, they had uh, bills that they had to pay. And they t I thought, well, I'm going to get on that. I think, yeah, Lord, can I? And Lord put on my heart to do it. So I put in so much. Now, they didn't know how much I gave. They didn't know anything about that. I was one of those that put in on that. And here we go. After the meeting, I'm putting things up. And this, this, man, this young man walks up to me and goes, man, I, I really appreciate what you 
going over there in the ministry you're getting involved in. I want to have 